and welcome everybody to Monitoring Medical Device Trials. This is an introductory course, and I am Gary Freeman, as Barbara mentioned, and I have over 30 years' experience in the pharmaceutical and medical device industries. Medical devices became regulated much later than drugs, but the act of monitoring is very similar between the two and often follows the same sorts of issues that we learn, if we are really careful, from the drug industry. Most of the guidance documents, in fact, issued by the FDA today cover both drug and device regulations, and most of them are affecting the investigator and how we monitor the studies for completeness and compliance to the regulations. The monitor has a very important role here in working with the investigator to make sure that he or she also is following the regulations. We're going to have a look at the basic principles today that are embraced by monitoring in this course. So let's take a look at our learning objectives. The first one is we're going to describe the regulatory purpose of why we do monitor device studies. What is the reason? What's the rationale behind this? We're also going to define the basic types of monitoring visits and the documentation requirements. Keep in mind that if it's not documented, it did not happen. That's a really big part of our communication and our documentation, whether it be a real visit to a site or if it's a remote site visit, that we're doing something remotely, whether it be on electronic media, whether we're doing emails, whatever we're doing in between our visits is just as important as the visit itself. And so the documentation must be linked together we're going to explore the roles and responsibilities of the monitor, also called the CRA, Clinical Research Associate, for those various types of visits. We'll go through each of the types of visits and how you get prepared for them, what it is that you do when you're there, and how do you document them at the end of each visit. We'll talk about the meaning of the protocol. That's our directive, what we're going to be doing on the study and also the regulatory, or GCP, Good Clinical Practice, compliance, both for us as sponsors or CROs and for the investigator, because we're often directing that investigator to keep him or her into compliance. When they fall out of compliance, we as sponsors are often cited as inadequate monitoring, because we didn't do our job either in trying to maintain compliance at that site. And lastly, we're going to recognize the rationale behind adequate documentation. Again, we need to identify the issues that we see at a site. We need to work with the site on the corrective action and the preventive action, if preventive action is needed. And most important is to evaluate how effective that action was. Did the issue go away? And this is important for the site as well as the sponsor. Remember, if it's not documented, it didn't happen. So we need to make sure that we've documented how effective it was, that we actually did check to see if whatever they were doing was working. Do we still have a problem at that site? As we get started, let's look at just a couple of demographics here to help us along the way. If you can give us a symbol, whether you're a sponsor today, if you're the CRO, or if you're a site, now, some folks will say, why are we asking this question? Because sponsors are the ones responsible for monitoring. And that's true. Overall, the ultimate responsibility is with the sponsor. However, in today's marketplace, very often the CRA is coming from a CRO. The CRO has a contract for monitoring with the sponsor. So we get a lot of CRO, CRAs as well. There should be a contract in place as to what it is that they're doing. Whose SOPs are they following, the CROs or the sponsors? The sponsor is ultimately responsible, but often the work is being done by the CRO. And we often have some folks as well from the investigator site. And you might wonder, why are they joining us when we're talking about the CRA and monitoring device trials? Very often, it's the coordinator at the site that's very interested in what the monitor is going to be doing when he or she comes to the site. So oftentimes we want to have the coordinator very aware of what's going to happen so that the site is prepared for our visit. So we often get site folks as well. Our next 
demographic question, are you a CRA? Are you a CRA manager? Or are you a site coordinator then? So give us a symbol for that one. Of course, if you're coming from a site, I would assume you're going to be the site coordinator. But sometimes we have other folks at a site as well joining in. There could be data managers, for example. The CRAs are usually the predominant population for this particular program, but we often do in the device world often have CRA managers as well who are looking to see what is the purpose of monitoring. Maybe they've not monitored themselves. In some device companies, CRA managers have not walked the rope. They haven't been on a site visit actually. They might be developing the program and therefore they're managing the study. Okay, so we often get all three of those, so thank you for that one as well. Helps me to view some of the questions that will come up. Let's get started then with asking the basic question as what is monitoring? What is it? If we look here on the first bullet, I've defined it according to the ICH. ICH in the second bullet you see in section 1.38. ICH is the International Council for Harmonization. That was started in the late 90s by the United States, Japan, and European Union. It was written for drugs. So when we read a lot of the definitions, they sound like they're for drug studies. The device industry has taken over the principles of GCP from ICH, and we often need to just change some of the wording to fit a device trial as opposed to a pharmaceutical trial, but the principle is the same. They're deeply rooted in our laws. Our law is the Code of Federal Regulations, and that would be Title 21 of the Code of Federal Regulations, Part 812. 812 is how we do device studies, the investigational device exemption, how to conduct clinical trials for devices. And they all agree that the Best definition, then, is that monitoring is the act of overseeing the progress of the study. It's not doing the study. It's working with the site. 